HIV treatment comes in three phases, first, second, and third line treatment. The regimen is made up of three or more antiretroviral drugs taken together. Sometimes, the drugs are combined into one pill. There are several different types and they work in different ways. All this is aimed at keeping the viral load down. A survey carried out by the AIDS support organization between 2012 and 2016 established that it is possible for a person living with HIV to adhere to treatment and suppress viral load. The study also found that it is also possible for one to have a high viral load while adhering to treatment. Christ Mubiru has been living with HIV since his birth. He started his treatment in 2007 after his health deteriorated. He says he has all along adhered to his treatment until recently when he was told he's not responding. But when you check my medical history, it shows that at a certain point, my viral load was undetectable. But as we speak now, it is detectable. The causes of that, only science can explain. I asked him what options the medical doctors provided. The only thing I've been told is to give it another six month trial. Viral load is the amount of HIV virus in one's body. A higher load means one's immune system has been greatly reduced, which makes the person vulnerable to illness. And a lower load means one is healthy. But there are indicators for calculating viral load. People are only being told you're not doing well on medicine, on your ARVs, either if they had developed a bad condition, what we call a pneumonic infection like TB, uh, this bad pneumonia, cancers related to HIV AIDS. That's what was happening, that's what we call the clinical uh, criteria of determining whether someone is not doing well on medicine. Then we would also look at CD4. Dr. Josephine Birunji is a research manager at the AIDS support organization, TASO. She says their study established complaints like Moviru's in 120 people out of the 1,100 study sample. Some had resistance, and actually it is the majority that they had already developed some resistance strain. She says all the first-line treatment failures are advised to try the second line. If your system has already developed resistance, it was not going to help on this first line, so we had to move to another line. Mobiru says he now doubts the first line treatment. I'll give you an example. The kind of medicine that we are taking, the one we require, we term as first line in Uganda, it's, it's no longer applied in the advanced world. In those well-to-do countries, they no longer use this kind of treatment. It expired, according to them. Drug-resistant HIV is now a common challenge in the country. This affects the first-line treatment, which is provided by the government. Dr. Josephine says their study showed that the second-line treatment is effective and there should be no worry. If someone should not worry that being on your second line, if you failed on your first line, yet you had good adherence, that you will fail on second line. So how available are other lines of treatment? Second line, it is there, but it's, it's quite expensive. He says... The third line is not readily available in the country. Except when you are extremely rich, this is when you can be able to access it. The availability of drugs to people living with HIV is just one of the factors that have broken the chain of adherence, amongst many others, including the fear of stigma and proximity of HIV centers to those who need the treatment. Whereas the government of Uganda put up a very strong fight against the control and spread of HIV in the country, it still faces a big challenge, especially in terms of funding. 90% of the budget for treatment of HIV is from international donors, including USAID, PEPFAR, and the Global Fund. Now, this poses a very great risk to the country in case these donors withdraw their money at any one time. Walter Mwesije, NTV. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.